Welcome, welcome, welcome to a riveting new video from Crypto Infographics, the channel where we dig into sometimes complex uh, crypto ideas, explore them, and summarize it in a convenient infographic. Before we jump in, please uh, support the channel. Hit the thumbs up button. Um, if you end up hating it, uh, you can remove the thumbs up later and pop on full screen, sit back and relax. And without further ado, let's go. All right, so here's the infographic for today. We're talking about the framework to estimate Bitcoin's long-term price target. And basically we're gonna be considering it, okay, it's either tulip mania, it's a volatile niche money technology, it's a store of value that will disrupt gold, or it is actually the superior asset of humanity. And we'll come back to this infographic. And this was inspired by a thread from at real VJ. He is an outstanding follow. I would totally recommend He says there's four main valuation frameworks for Bitcoin. And I wanted to summarize them. Number one, Bitcoin's rise is equivalent to tulip mania. No comparative advantage. It's going to zero. So a few people still reside in this camp and actually a fantastic resource and a good laugh is Bitcoin obituaries. I'll link it in the description. Bitcoin has officially died 340 times and counting. Um, so these are clearly coming from people who have the framework that this is tulip mania. Um, stage two or option two, Bitcoin is a new monetary technology whose appeal is largely limited to the techno technologically savvy and libertarian minded people who can tolerate its volatility. Price target 10K to 100K. And actually very few people seem to reside in this stage for long because it's very hard to predict that, uh, or it's very hard to imagine that this is the end result of, of Bitcoin. Um, these are people that do reside in this camp are people that think that, okay, this is, can be used for online transactions. There's, there's fringe use cases, perhaps, you know, WikiLeaks, perhaps, you know, criminal activity, perhaps remittances. There's certain things where Bitcoin might be better than, um, you know, tr transacting through, you know, the existing financial system and the existing payment rails. But that's that's going to be the extent of things. And people tend to move from stage two to stage three very quickly as uh, they continue to understand Bitcoin. So number three, Bitcoin is a new monetary good that will primarily disrupt its closest monetary cousin, gold. It is significantly superior to gold along all the attributes that make gold a good store of value, long-term target um, up to $1 million per Bitcoin. So why is this? Well, the Winklevi do an outstanding job of it in their article, The Case for 500K Bitcoin. And the easy premise is that, you know, gold uh, commands a, you know, 10 to $13 trillion market cap. Um, Bitcoin is a $325 billion uh, market cap, and it's superior to gold as a store of value. We can compare the two. Bitcoin is fixed. Um, it is software. It can be sent anywhere in the world, just like email, to anyone, anytime, in any amount without um, censorship, uh, stored in a digital wallet rather than having to construct a ridiculous vault to hold your gold. Um, it is, it, it, so far it's impossible to, to counterfeit a Bitcoin um, and adoption. That's the one thing gold wins at. Um, it's been around for 6,000 years. Uh, but I think the biggest point is that, you know, Bitcoin scarcity is fixed, gold is not. Gold, um, gold's uh, supply increases at about 2% a year. We've recently discovered the biggest gold mine ever discovered. Um, it exists in oceans. It exists in space. Um, and to, to believe that the you know, gold supply is, is going to be finite, that underestimates the power of human ingenuity. Um, and so we don't know how scarce gold is. And the other interesting thing is that when you know gold supply increases, the demand adjusts to it. And so when a, there's a market dynamic where, let's say the price of gold is increasing, then humans are gonna dedicate more time and resources to 
producing gold, which is going to increase its supply on the market, which is going to drive down its, um, its cost. Um, and that does not happen with Bitcoin because the difficulty adjustment. But that's for another video. Back to the chart, we're gonna go on to stage four. Bitcoin will ultimately become the world's reserve currency is as superior as a collateral asset to anything ever created and will eventually drain store value premiums out of government bonds, real estate, precious metals, and rare art. Long-term target, 10 million plus. And uh, this is summed up nicely in an image here that I love. Ah. Imagine everything there is and everything that ever will be divided by 21 million. And uh, this is from Nutz von Holm. He is an outstanding follow on Twitter as well. If you're looking for more um, mind-blowing material on everything infinity divided by 21 million, check out this video. Um, I love it. I'll link it in the description. And Michael Saylor does a good job of explaining it as always. Augmented by great technology partners, Bitcoin is capable of collecting all the monetary energy in the world and storing it securely and perpetually without power loss and channeling it efficiently to anyone or anything at the speed of light. Few understand this indeed. So let's go back to the infographic. We have the framework for Bitcoin's long-term price target. One, tulip mania. Two, volatile niche monetary technology. Three, store of value uh, technology that will disrupt gold. And four, the superior asset of humanity. So when you're buying Bitcoin and investing, you should probably ask yourself, which one of these do you fall into? So I wanna know which camp do you fall into? One, two, three, or four? Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video and I will see you in the next video of Crypto Infographics.